Well, hello, Dave Hill coming at you again with lesson 27. I hope you've been working on those arpeggios from last lesson. We're going to give you some more in this lesson, but I want you to work real hard on any new information that I give you in a, in a lesson. And be honest with yourself. Don't just spend a few minutes and, and go over the patterns and go, okay, well, I've got it now. You got to push yourself. Okay, that means you've got to find other ways to use new information. So those two arpeggio shapes that I gave you last lesson, you want to be trying to plug those in as much as you can in a variety of situations. Just make those your study for the, the next two weeks. Okay, so just because we go over something new in the next lesson doesn't mean that the previous stuff that you've covered is mastered. You have to master it and, and it's going to take a lifetime to really get some of this stuff down. But we're, what we're going to spend time today in this next lesson to give you kind of a break from learning anything too too much in the fingering department in terms of arpeggios is going to be more of an exercise. So this is going to be an exercise that's going to help you with your technique. Okay, so you can see what I've done in the board I wrote. Le technique workout lesson. What I'm talking about here is something that you're going to do every day and it's going to help your guitar playing if you do it every day. And this is a downloadable lesson, okay, or downloadable um, exercise. And I want you to see what I'm holding right here. Okay, this is what you're going to download from uh, your computer and you can print it out so you can follow along with me. So I want you to do that. Okay, now it says right on the paper when you download it, it says Steve Morse picking exercise. And what it is, is exactly that. It's a Steve Morse who's the incredible uh, guitar player of the, of the Dregs and his own Steve Morse band. And he plays now with Deep Purple and he's played with Kansas. He's just a master guitarist and musician and composer and he one thing one of the many things he's known for is it in having incredible technique and uh, this exercise appeared in guitar player magazine many years ago and uh, I give it to my students a lot in in my teaching and I would thought I would share it with you today so let's go over what it is it's basically a triplet exercise and it's all about arpeggio shapes okay so I'm going to play it once at the beginning so you can hear what it sounds like and then I'm going to show you how to play it Okay, but this is something you want to do every day. Here we go. Three, four. triplet workout there, okay? And, and essentially what, what we've got here is an, an exercise built off primarily off of arpeggios, minor and major arpeggios primarily with a few passing notes and scales along the way. But it's a good, it's a good triplet exercise. So I'm going to go through it uh, two measures at a time just to give you uh, a chance to work on it before we go to the next two measures. So the f let's go over the first two measures of the piece. And once again, I want you to to print it out from the from the online lesson. Okay, the first shape you're going to play is off of this form of a triad. Okay, this is in the key of E minor, so it's essentially in the E minor triad, starting from the root right here, in open position and playing up the first three notes. It's good for this exercise is great because it gives you different combinations of fingers to work out on. So in this case, we're pretty much doing the one, three, and four. So that's the first measure. Let's just drill that right there. Three, four. Now, if it's tactical, slow it down, that's okay. You want to work at your own tempo. Okay, that might mean that actually, since you're just working on it, you might need to play it about here. 
That's okay. The point, the point is you got a plate at the temple that you can only play it clean at and not, and not fast and sloppy. That's no good. Okay, so the next bar now, we go to an F sharp major sound. So it almost looks just like the form of an F sharp chord right here because you're essentially playing the notes of an F sharp um, triad. Except the passing note right there. Okay, so what you're trying to strive for is, is articulation. You don't want this to be like sounding like a chord, like. Right, you don't want the notes to ring together. You want them to be detached and articulate. So now let's put that uh, that together with the first measure, but let's do the, the second measure by itself for a few times. Two, three, four. Now the first measure, second measure. Probably a little faster for most people. Let's slow it down just a little bit. I guess it's about as slow as I can get it. Okay. Um, okay. Let's go to the next measure now. We go back to E minor. Now what we do is we take that same shape we started with, but we ex we ascend higher up the arpeggio form. And we add a ninth along the way, because it's E minor, but this is an F sharp, so it's the ninth. And once again, it's all about combinations of fingers. In this case, we're using all four fingers, because we get one, three, and four here. One again, and then the two comes in. So that's a good workout with our second finger now. So let's fix that measure. Three, four. Okay, now let's put the first three measures together. One, two, three, four. Okay, so you see how it's starting to come together now? Okay, so this is what we're doing. We're working on a measure at a time, and we're going to me uh, memorize it better that way. This is an, another important thing about learning these exercises, is it's good to memorize these, because then you can play them anytime you want whenever you want to warm your fingers up. You don't have to be looking at your music. You can just do it right when you pick up your guitar and just warm up. Okay, the next shape comes from this form of, e, of B7. And now we're going to add a couple of chromatic notes along the way. So we're essentially playing around this form, but we're using neighboring tones next to the roots in the fifth and the third. skip over the third, I'm sorry, we go right to the fifth again. And then we walk up, and that brings us up to this position. Okay, so that's, that's how it's going to work out from the E minor. Okay, it's pretty cool now. It sounds very musical, doesn't it? Okay, let's put the measures three and four together. Two, three, four. Okay, here we go with measures three and four. Two, three, four. 
One more time. One more time. Okay, excellent. Okay, now that brings us up to this middle position. We're gonna, I'm gonna give you a couple measures at a time now just to get through them because I think you can see what's happening here. This is E minor. Right, it's gonna be essentially played twice. And then it's gonna go down to B7. But check this out, the B7 shape is in this position as well and it looks like this. So this is a tough combination because you use your, th your second, third, and fourth are kind of spaced with a spa uh, fret in between, so you're kind of spread out there. So you've got this. It's a tough combination. Okay, so now we put that together with what we've learned, uh, and we've got all the way through the end of measure six. Here we go. Three, four. Okay. Pretty good, huh? You're learning, you're learning it and you're really picking it up. But what we're doing here is we're doing a little bit at a time. And that's the important uh, secret in learning new information is to learn little bits of information, not all uh, everything new at once, but break it up into little components and you'll learn it and memorize it faster that way. Okay, so after we've got this part, and we're going to come back down to this shape of E minor. And this is just the same thing, you know, four times in a row. So. And then we go back down to this shape for B7. So these two measures, uh, measure seven and eight. Something like that. So let's put measure seven and eight uh, with five and six together, and then you'll see how that sounds. So here's five and six going into seven and eight. Three, four. So that brings us to the bottom of the, uh, the first page there. And we've got this. We're kind of at the, where we started at the beginning. But now it's in the bottom of the page and we're playing this combination backwards. Now, so this is just E minor and B7. It's a good workout your third and fourth fingers. All right, you're doing a lot of extended work with your third and fourth in combination, okay? So let's do that with the metronome here. Measure, uh, the last two measures of the first page. Three, four. right there. Let's see if we can do the whole first page. You've kept up with it real well. Let's see if we can play it all the way through the first page and keep it going. Here we go. One, two, three, four. the whole first page. It's pretty remarkable. You just started working on on that and now you've got the whole first page, right? Two, four, six, eight, ten. That's ten measures right there. All right, let's go. Let's finish off the second page now. Um, and, and see what, what lies ahead here. 
So we've gone from the B7 and we're going to finish off uh, going into the second page now. We go down a little bit lower with the minor, the minor shape. Notice we're going all the way down to the fifth of the E minor. And I, I haven't talked about the picking yet, but it's important to note. Notice that I'm doing alternate picking. Okay, that's the point of this exercise is to try to keep your alternate picking technique going on. So that's what you want to be focused on as well as your left hand workout. Okay. Okay. Now we go to the B7 here. And once again, we've used this shape before, but check out what it does this time. It goes. It targets the root by playing a half step above it. And then it kind of walks up the scale. So that's, that sounds like this now in combination. Top of the second pager. Okay. So that, that inevitably leads us up to that B again where we've been before. And check out what happens now. What's going on there? It's an E minor sound turning into an E dominant seven. Right, we've already discussed this shape. For dominant chords, and now you have one. You can see what's happening. It's E minor turning into E dominant. Okay, and then it goes up to the C here and it plays the A minor try. But that becomes the next uh, shape turns into a major triad, so it's A minor, F major, D major. Okay, so that's kind of cool. You hear this real, almost classical kind of uh, effect here. All right, let's try that again. the harmony that's implied there with that motion. I meant to hit that note. Okay, so it's important to understand the chords that you're uh, outlining with this exercise too because it helps you memorize it better. So it's starting from the top of the second page. It's, it sounds like this now. Three, four. <laughs> Okay, one more time, top of the second page. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, and you can hear how it's kind of ascending in, in a kind of a melodic, exciting way. Goes up to G. Repeats this tried, and it moves it to C. So it's G, C. Okay, let's try that. That's pretty easy, but let's just try that. Now let's start back on the E minor and put that together. Where it goes to E minor, E dominant. Two, three, four. G, C. Okay, and then we're going to finish off the last two measures. And this is where it gets kind of tricky. We're going to play B7 here. And we're going to change positions quickly and play an inversion of B7. It's really more of a, just a B triad, actually. Okay, and then we get into the E minor sound, and we're playing it here at the 12th position. 
and we bring in the D natural here. So you have the B7. And then finally we have this big leap here from the flat seven on the dominant chord. And then outlining the, another inversion of the dominant chord. So that's the last part. Okay, so that puts us in this last position moving around quite a bit. Okay, so that's the end of the second page, and that's essentially the whole exercise. Okay, so let's start it, start it from the second page. Let's see if you can keep up with me now. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One. Let's start from the second page and see if you can keep up with me. One, two, three, four. last a little bit, isn't it? Let's try it one more time. Let me try it without the sequence. I'll just tap it in slowly with you. One and a two and a three and a four and a... The, the completion of the exercise. We've learned both parts now. We've learned the first and the second page, and you've got yourself an, a really great workout exercise that you can use the rest of your life as a guitar player to warm up and get your chops kind of uh, all tight and focused when you're ready to play a gig or you're ready to just start practicing. This is a good thing to work on, and it's only one of many things that you might want to actually use uh, as a practicing warm up or just a workout exercise. Uh, you want to have a variety of things, not just triplet exercises, but 16th note exercises, not just arpeggio exercises, but scales and interval exercises too. So this is just one of many things you want to focus on. All right, let's take it from the top now and see if we can put it together. I'm not going to play it with a sequencer this time. I'm just going to play it slowly with you so you can keep up with it. Okay, here we go from the top. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> There's your first real uh, triplet technique exercise, and we learned that all in one lesson today. So that's really good. If you if you uh, printed this lesson out and you're staring at it and you're looking at it and you've got through that much and you were able to keep up with that was a great lesson. You really did a marvelous job. Even if you didn't and you you're struggling to get through all the way to the end, that's okay because what you've done is you've learned the mechanics of it and you know where your fingers have got to go now and you're going to be okay. So just keep practicing it and you're going to memorize it, okay? So I'll take you out with it one more time and I'm going to see you in the next lesson. Here we go. Let's practice it together and I'll see you on the next one. Okay, talk to you soon. Two, three, four.